All right, so one of the bands that we work for um, needed a teleprompter. What well, did a teleprompter sitting out on stage? And uh, I told him I'd build him a shell for it. Uh, what I'm doing here is I decided to make something that looks kind of cool. I wanted something that didn't have those straight, sharp angles, something that was more round. And uh, so what I've done is I put two saw blades on the saw there, about a half an inch apart. And I'm making cuts that are almost all the way through the wood, leaving about a mil and a half, like a couple layers of the 17 ply per inch wood, um, fin uh, Finland birch wood. And here I'm putting some water on it before I do the bend. It makes it bendable if you put a bunch of cuts. And I've calculated how many cuts it takes to do the various angles. Um, paint some water on it. Here I've got the paintbrush out and some wood glue painting it in to um, fill the void so when I fold it, it will uh, hold it in place. And uh, getting the straps out, a strap around it, and you can tighten the straps up. There's a little bit of variable um, dimension in the angle there, uh, so you got to be a little careful, and uh, I'll measure it in a minute. Let's see, it's going to take a Dell 24-inch monitor. It's got a real thin surround, and... It's going to be double angle. They'll be able to um, sit at the low angle or the high angle, depending if they want to be far or near from the wedge or from the teleprompter shell. I like to do these flash projects where uh, I take a concept and very quickly uh, take the idea. I, very, I do very little paperwork. I just kind of scratch it on a piece of paper and um, build it in, on the fly. Uh, what I'm doing now is I've drawn, a, I've traced out the shape onto a piece of wood and I did a rough cut with the jigsaw with only paying attention to the front curvature as the, uh, for accuracy. The rest of it I left a little extra. And here I'll cut out the other side. I traced the first side to get the second side so they'd be the same. And I'll cut that out and mount those on the top, put some glue on there, uh, staple it on and I'm leaving a little trim around the outside to that I'll take off with a router. Uh, it doesn't need to be super strong. Normally a speaker cabinet so I'll screw and glue but this one stapling is going to be just fine. Uh, what is going on here? Uh, we'll get the sanders out. I think we'll get the sander out. Oh, router. I'm going to get the router out and uh, put the trim bit in and trim it around the outside. I've got a pretty cool um, tool set up, that fest tool with the vacuum uh, really minimized. You can see almost no dust is coming off of that thing. And I remembered to put my earmuffs on. I can see I like to do that with the router. It's about 24 inches wide, uh, 13 inches high, and about 17 inches deep. Uh, sand it down a little bit, take off some of the little wood burrs and change out to a uh, 3 8 inch uh, router bit to round over the edges, make them uh, look real smooth. And... Let's see, yeah, more sanding. You know, the sanding and painting and filling a void, that, that takes more time. I mean, this is most of the stuff is, the core project is done now. Uh, this one took me about a little over four hours from the time I uh, started cuts to finished it, but it took me over two days. So I did about an hour, 45 minutes the first night, let it dry overnight, and then in the morning, um, when it was uh, had its shape, I went ahead and finished it. All right, now what I've done is I've got some Bondo, and I set it up for a pretty quick dry, and I'm spackling over or pasting over all the little staple holes and any imperfections in the wood that might stand out after it's painted. Uh, Bondo's a really good way or uh, anything like that. That resin, quick drying, pasty resin is a great way to do it. Um, yeah, I paste, I slap it all on there, then I wait till it's about half dry, go over it with a razor blade, take off most of it. Uh, if you do it, time it right, and you make the mix hot enough, uh, you don't, it doesn't even really slow you down. You just keep going. This video is shot with uh, five-second photos, photos every five-second time-lapse. And in real time, I, this is um, almost... I stopped it a few times to change batteries and to go get some food. 
but uh, this is almost a straight shot straight through. All right, so now I got the monitor out, and I'm trying to figure out how to mount the monitor. I know I want something to go across. I know I want to have a pivot on there. And I looked at the base. I saw that if I took the base apart, there's a little plate that clipped into the back of the monitor. So I'm going to take that plate and mount it to a little square block of wood with tiny um, wood screws. And then uh, mount that block of wood to a crossbar that goes all the way across. And then a couple flanges that drop down. Uh, oh, what, what I'm doing now is I'm taking some eighth inch thick plywood with a hole saw and making some washers, some wooden washers that will be the pivot points so that the whole side of the cross brace doesn't rub and it minimizes enough friction to keep kind of lock it in place when you tighten up the side screws, but not so much that uh, it gets stuck. All right, and there's the sander, sanding off the bits there, turn the camera around and screwing some stuff together. And this is, I actually built another one um, last week, last weekend, um, and I, gave him, I had the wrong dimensions. Uh, the tour sent me the wrong dimensions, so it was a quarter of an inch too small for the monitor. So this is my second one. Uh, there you can see the cross brace sitting there on the table saw to the left with the plate on it, putting my painting um, rag down. I've drilled the holes in the side for the connectors. For the connectors, uh, one of them I put a Ethercon, um, not an Ethercon, a Speakon, Powercon on the side and recessed that in. And then for the uh, video connection, the 15 pin D connector uh, there, I built a little wood block and kind of sandwiched a little extension cable. Um, Spray paint, took a whole can of spray paint, uh, nothing special there. Took it outside, set it in the sun, and um, I shot this with a satin, a black satin spray paint. Now we'll sh uh, tape off the little flat, the little metal plate, uh, shoot that. Black satin, and then I shot it with another satin clear coat just to kind of uh, reduce some of it. Uh, the wear on it. I'm trying to get this monitor. This actually took a while for me. Uh, here what I'm doing is I'm putting on some rubber uh, cushions because the plate is made for like a, a desktop use. So those rubber cushions, once they snap that plate in place, the rubber cushions stop the monitor from wiggling side to side and kind of hold it, keep some pressure on it. And then I found that the plate fell off, so I had to add some washers and some more screws to the back to really sandwich that plate on there um, to the wood. So I'm going around looking for parts. and All right, getting that thing put on there. I think I take it off, put it on, take it off. Look for parts. Um, screwing those flange edges on. All right, let's get this thing painted up. Shooting the second layer. See the little two connector holes inside the wedge there. Lights coming in, put it outside. And I don't know where I went, I had to go do something. Maybe get some coffee or something and, uh, oh, soldering iron. Got the soldering station out, soldering up the um, power con. Cut off the end of the little power supply cable that goes inside, and I'll solder that to the panel mount connector. Put some shrink wrap on it with a little torch, and it's dry enough. Shooting the clear coat uh, should shine up a little bit. There it is. Out she goes to dry again. I didn't have anywhere to put it. I carried it around out there, and I didn't really have a side to set it on. Uh, so I brought it back in. Um, let's see. Oh, so now I'm building the little flange piece for the connector to hold that um, video connector. That was um, a bit of a pain as well. All right, screwing everything onto the inside. Yeah, so it, uh, it's got a pretty good angle. Notice the curves on it. It doesn't look like uh, um, 
you know, just to square it up, I really hate the way that uh, most speakers just have these sharp corners. Uh, everything I design, I try and make it look something about it to be attractive. It should not only sound good or serve its purpose, um, but it should also be aesthetically pleasing. Uh, kind of trying to get the connectors. Oh, I'm mounting the power supply. I put a couple little cable clamps down, screwed to the bottom, ran some tie wraps over it. Trying to get the monitor in. It's too tight. Uh, I didn't leave enough slop there. So I'm going to take that flange off. Or not, I'll take it off. I'm going to take the whole monitor and flange and bring it around. You won't see me, but I'll bring it to the belt sander right behind me, right behind us here and um, sand off the ends a bit, those little washers, so that they've got more... Um, play between the sidewalls and it was much easier to get in. I got two T-nuts and screw holes in the side that um, allow the monitor to tilt inside the case and there it is. It's on. Get some of that dust off of there and there's the connectors. Uh, you can see the Ethercon and the video connector. The video connector is recessed um, back into the wedge and Pretty soon we should see, there she is, the finished product, uh, a nice little um, teleprompter shelf. <laughs>